question. Early next year, Intel will be launching their all-new line of enthusiast gamer GPUs, and I ask you, how likely are you to get one? What would it take for you to switch away from NVIDIA or AMD, whatever it is you're using at the moment? What price and performance are you looking for? And how eager are you to actually be an early adopter of a brand new GPU architecture, even if it is from a Goliath like Intel? Do you currently feel in need of a new GPU upgrade? Are you feeling nervous about leaping ship? And by that I mean many PC gamers tend to be a bit sticky when it comes to the brand of their GPUs. We tend to stick with what we know we already like. NVIDIA users especially are quite prone to staying with Team Green. But there's a fair share of Team Red peeps who are hard to move away from AMD too. This brand loyalty could be a big problem for Intel. Well, I say brand loyalty, but this isn't quite like the console fanboy stuff, where it is just sort of blind tribalism. In this case, it's often more of an inertia thing rather than blind devotion to a corporate brand. Again, we, we like to stick with what we already know, like, and trust. When PC gamers switch GPU or indeed CPU brands, it's often out of dissatisfaction with the last purchase or a temptation for a much better performance level. Like, for example, what happened over the last few years where the once king of gaming CPUs, Intel, was rapidly and unceremoniously dethroned by AMD's glove slap that was the Ryzen family. Within 18 months of Ryzen launching, you'd be struggled to finding anyone who was recommending any Intel chips for a new gaming rig over the Ryzen choices. But now, of course, we might just be seeing that pendulum swing back. Hello again, I am Blunty, and I want to run you through what we know about Intel's GPUs and what we hope for Intel's new GPUs and try and put some perspective on it for those of you who don't follow this stuff super closely. So to further the context I was just setting up, Intel's new 12900K and 12600K CPUs are hitting the shelves as I speak. The first reviews have just came out over the weekend and such, and they do seem to be putting AMD back in check again by being highly competitive, price competitive, and in many factors, beating the most desirable Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, at least for the kind of higher end enthusiast gamer stuff that a lot of reviewers that I saw at least were testing it about. And this, of course, is why brand loyalty is silly. Competition is good for us end users. The Ryzen 5000 chips have already started seeing deep price cuts of between $30 to $150 in some stores. Some are claiming this is reactionary pricing to stay relevant dollar versus performance against Intel's new stuff, although... It is also likely the start of clearing out of stock time because rumbles have it that as early as January, we'll see the wraps come off the next generation Ryzen 6000 series. So a lot of retailers won't want a lot of old inventory sitting around, hence the price cuts. So depending on which bias you want to project, it will mean which way you interpret the price drops. Either Ryzen are pooping their pants in the face of Intel's new fierce competitors, or they're just starting to get rid of the older stuff before introducing the new stuff. Interesting timing though. But with that as our framing, as our perspective, back to Intel and their new GPUs coming early next year. As we get closer and closer to real world stuff, I mean, graphics cards in the hands of people who can tell you about them independently, as opposed to educated guesses based on insider leaks and information and Intel's carefully crafted marketing timeline, Intel's first generation of their all-new GPU architecture, generally called XE, but the first generation will be called Alchemist, designed and marketed for the currently growing PC gaming space, which is also currently already choking a bit, hampered as it is by supply issues thanks to the silicon shortage and the other supply issues the pandemic has exasperated. And from all indication, we're still a bit far away from climbing out of. Intel's new focus on proper, proper gaming GPUs, from what we know so far, really do look like they mean business. In previous videos of my own, and indeed the general expectation consensus out there amongst, you know, YouTubers and pundits and whatnot, is that Alchemist's flagship models must, at the absolute least, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of the RTX 3060 Ti and have at least one option competitive with the more aspirational high-end stuff like the RTX 3070 Ti and even the RTX 3080 Ti. 
Because even though most gamers can't afford, can't justify, or even don't want the super high-end stuff like the 3070 Ti and the 3080 Ti, you need those ones out there to be the flagships to encourage people to get the middle tier stuff. It is no secret that the 3060 and 3060 Ti's are the better selling units because they offer the best balance between what you're spending and what you're getting out of them. And indeed, quite recently, Intel have now started finally confirming some base specifications, including a flagship model. Arc Alchemist cards that will have 32 XE cores, each one of which will have 16 vector engines, 16 matrix engines, all wrapped up together for a total of 512 execution units and 4096 floating point 32 shading units. And without proper context of exactly how powerful any of those parts of the architecture actually are in the real world running games, it's hard to give that any meaningful context even if you do know what those numbers mean. But more encouragingly, unlike some of Nvidia's recent cards, they are not skimping on memory. With an expected 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 on board, very encouraging because, well, in my own gaming machine right now, I've got a 3070, it has 8 gig, and I've already run into a couple of games where I just can't run them at their full potential because it does not have enough graphics memory for all of the high res 4K textures that that game wants to load into memory. Far Cry 6 being an example of that. And indeed, many of NVIDIA's more recent graphics card offerings have been criticized for their lack of sufficient memory in the context of what today's games are doing and heading towards. They might be okay today, but they don't have very long legs on them without enough memory. But with all these confirmations of these specs that were in fact leaked, of course, uh, comes a renewed repeating of the expectation that it will have RTX 3070-like performance. Very specifically, I keep seeing RTX 3070, not RTX 3070 Ti. And there is a noticeable performance gap between those two, so it'll be interesting to see how it measures up in the end. Some unsighted sources seem to be claiming it'll be even better than a 3070. But like I was saying before, it kind of has to be better than that, really. When AMD came to market with a complete architecture rejig and launched their new generation of Radeon cards, they were good, great even. But they were behind NVIDIA, sort of product for product in positioning terms, and only really competed in any meaningful way by slightly undercutting on price versus performance. But then you hit the wall again of that, that stickiness of many PC gamers. If they're already with Tim Green, chances are they were going to stick there until AMD offers something significantly better. And indeed, over the last few years of the new Radeon stuff, Gamers largely didn't buy in, and NVIDIA hardly wrecked it at all because they didn't need to. They were still easily, and by a very, very wide margin, industry leaders when it comes to just how many graphics cards were theirs versus how many graphics cards were AMD's in end user systems. Conversely, when AMD slammed down their Ryzen CPU chips a few years back, it completely put Intel on the back foot. And it's only now, a few years later, that Intel are climbing out of their obvious second place when it comes to gamer CPUs. We, the consumers, the gamers, really want Intel to do to NVIDIA what AMD did to Intel on CPUs. Because NVIDIA, well... NVIDIA are like Intel was a few years back. They're kind of resting on their laurels. They're not really pushing forward very hard. They don't have to work hard because they don't face any real competition. We need Intel to force fierce competition in this space, force larger leaps forward in technology and performance and price, and with luck, force those prices down. Although that last one didn't really happen very significantly to CPUs. In fact, as soon as AMD had a clear lead against Intel in the CPU space, they stopped cracking so hard on prices and allowed themselves the luxury of more premium pricing. It's what businesses do. And at the same event where we had some of these specs officially confirmed by Intel, they also started showing off some of their other technologies to go with it. Specifically, their competitor for NVIDIA's DLSS, and indeed AMD's FSR, Intel XESS, using Riftbreaker, a recently launched base building survival action RPG game from Excel Studios. Now, there wasn't a lot of useful detail here nothing really about how much performance it was improving over native 4k and it was only one game and it was very controlled circumstances but their sample images showed a very clean upscaling to 4k so it's encouraging at least to see the visual performance is this promising but promising or not it's only useful 
if it also delivers a significant performance gain, as indeed NVIDIA's DLSS does, which very frequently offers anywhere between 20 and even 60% or more boosts in equivalent frame rates over native resolution rendering. With all of this, we also have some details about the lower tier units at 384 and 128 execution units respectively for an entry and mid-level offering, less exciting than the flagship, but very likely much more practical for the larger portion of gamers. As I was talking about before, it's, it's the RTX 3060 model. We need a 3060 offering, even if their flagship is competitive with 3070 or 3080 or whatever it is. The 3060 level one is the one most people are going to be looking for to spend their money on in any practical sense. Now on that note, pricing is of course the last part of the puzzle. And for that there's, well there's only really guesswork right now. We can guess that they're going to be very competitive with Nvidia because again, they kind of just have to be. We're still months away from these things hitting shelves or even being properly shown off. So any official pricing, even internally at Intel or their partners right now will still be quite soft. But all information we have current still points to a quarter one launch in 2022. So hopefully we won't have to wait too long before we get the first rumblings of that. So I'll ask again as I opened, what would it take for you to switch away from Nvidia or AMD to Intel's new flagships? What price and performance are you looking for? And how eager are you to be an early adopter of a brand new GPU architecture, which I promise you right now, even though it's from Intel, it won't be without some weird little issue or glitch or flaw or performance quirk or something like that. Wiser amongst you might want to wait for a generation two of this stuff, but I can tell you right now, I'll be tapping whoever will listen to me at Intel for a sample of it because I am very eager to find out exactly what their first swing at the bat of this is going to do. And again, I am very hopeful, very hopeful that they are going to take the bat to Nvidia's knees. I mean, I love my Nvidia cards. I've got NVIDIA cards in both of my machines. They are fantastic, but it could be better if NVIDIA had more competition, right? Right. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been interesting, entertaining, or informative. Perhaps all of the above. Hopefully, if it has been any of those, you've done the thumb and the bell and left a comment and stuff. And thank you as always to the patrons, whose above and beyond support is extremely valuable and loved by me. Your friendly voice from behind the microphone, Blunty. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.